Well, hello there. Um, just a quick response to a call I heard on TalkSport this morning, uh, which surprised me. Um, that said, I mean, I liked it. I mean, I liked the guy's honesty. Um, I liked that he had uh, a thought and a conviction of thought and he had it and had it well. It was the guy that rang in about uh, Manchester United, my Manchester United. I'm the guy that thinks we're miles behind some teams that we shouldn't really be behind. I'm the guy that really worries for us next year and doesn't think we'll make top four. Um, like lots about his call and agree with some of the things there. But I must say, I, I think we're doing reasonably well. I think Tenag is fantastic. The guy said the same. I don't think we need a hell of a lot next season to make us into a real force. I, I really don't. And to that end, I've done a few notes. So I've got the old bins on because as I say the eyes aren't what they used to be so I hope you don't mind me quickly having a look but before we start what I would say is we've won one cup we're in another cup final hopefully we'll win that it's going to be difficult but hopefully we're going to win that um, and we're going to make top four this talk about somebody catching us it's not going to happen we're going to make top four I'm pretty certain of that if you see last night's posting the late posting and I'm sorry for the quality it was done with no lighting and I don't have the equipment that these big boys have uh, but if you look at the match report last night from the, the Brighton United game, um, like I say, that, that's the point drop. We should have took a point there. Not saying we deserve the point, but once you get to 95 minutes uh, and it's nil-nil, you just shut up shop. What that Luke Shaw did was just unbelievable. Mind you, what he said in the interviews after the match was beyond unbelievable. But if you've not seen it, have a look at that. I mean, if you've not heard what he said, just have a listen to that that I did last night. I just cannot believe what he said. Just rank stupidity but I don't think we're a million miles off and I think we've got the right manager there so for me I don't think there's lots of stuff needs tweaking I do agree with the caller in that we've uh, got three or four 80 million pound players that are definitely not 80 million pound players um, Maguire definitely isn't if only because of his lack of pace Sancho we've proven he definitely isn't and Anthony will could and probably will get better but at £80 million pound for, for where he is now, we've paid miles over the odds. You'd have to get rid of Maguire because unless you play him in a back three, he isn't going to work for us. Everybody knows his frailties and they're exposed on a regular basis in, in our division. Um, Anthony you'd probably keep because he's going to get better. But with the right players up front, he might not always get in. He wouldn't be a starter for me. And Sancho, I think I'd just get rid of. I think there's a good player there, but he's not doing it for us. And I don't think he's going to do it for us. So you're recouping a good few quid there. But for me, what I'd be looking at doing for next year is this. You get rid of Maguire. You get rid of McTominay, because he wants to go anyway, I believe. You get rid of Van Der Beek, because he hasn't done it either. You get rid of Sancho. And you get rid of my mate Iggy, or uh, Marshall to, to everybody else there. Iggy's got to go. Again, last night, 80 minutes. How we got 80 minutes is he's totally beyond me. He offered nothing yet again last night. He's a passenger like he is virtually week after week. Definitely go. Fred, I'm 50-50 on. It'd be a bench player for me as to whether he starts or not. Last night, I think he played reasonably well. He's combative, he never stops running, he works hard. But his problem is, as I've said many times on here, he's a £50 million pound Brazilian player who struggles to control the ball and can't really pass the ball to any great extent. He'll make the odd pass, but more of his passes come unstuck than they don't, so we're constantly losing the ball. Unheard of for a Brazilian, but we've got him. Uh, Wan Bissaka, I know everyone's loving him now as a big loving. You know how I feel about him if you watch this channel. For me, he doesn't offer enough. He's one on ones, and against that lad last night from Brighton, he played well, but he offers nothing to his wing back. He offers nothing, and the game slowed down every time he gets the ball because he wants to make a square pass or a back pass, or if it's a forward pass, a five yard pass. The winger can't go in his bag and run up that touchline. No one's going to get a good ball from Wan Bissaka because Wan Bissaka's not got in his locker. And again last night you've seen Juan Basaka's lack of editing ability. He was all over the place. He loses the ball in flight and everything. His positional play is bad. He isn't for me. The reason I say 60-40, 40% of me would keep him if ever we decided to play a back three. I think he could be ideal in a back three. Especially with somebody like uh, Varane next to him, positioning him and telling him what to do. Uh, but other than that, he's not a starter for me by any means. But tweaking with the team, what I would look at is this. You obviously don't play out from the back if you keep De Gea. We can't do it. We've discussed that on a couple of occasions. You don't pass out from the back. You get a new full-back to replace Wan-Bissaka, somebody that can help his winger. 
You get one more world-class centre-back because you're going to get rid of Maguire. And the reason you get one world-class centre-back is, for my money, the holding midfielder, the top holding midfielder, they're really, really hard to find. We've got somebody there doing it in Casemiro. We could do with a partner in crime for Casemiro. I don't think Fred is the man. As I say, his control and his passing out isn't good enough. Matt Tamanay often goes missing and he's very rash and he doesn't want to be there. What I might look at, if you could get a fantastic centre-back to partner Varane, we've got an ideal holding midfielder who could play next to Casemiro in Martinez. Martinez could do a fantastic job. And if ever Varane or Martinez's replacement gets injured, you just drop Martinez back in centre of defence to partner whoever's left. For me, that's sorted. Where else would we go? Up front... Well, it's easy for me, depending on if he stays or not. You've got Greenwood on one wing, you've got Rashford on the other, and through the middle you're going to, you're going to get Harry Kane or someone of that ilk. If you don't get Harry Kane or someone of that ilk, and Greenwood does stay, you play Greenwood through the middle, and then you've got Rashford on one side, and on the other side you've got a choice of Garnaccio, who'd be first for me, or Anthony. Um, and then you'd also keep, you'd probably keep Anthony, you'd keep Garnaccio, you'd keep Palestria, we need to see more of him, you'd keep Diallo, you keep Victor Lindelof. I wanted, I wanted him to go for a while. I not thought he's impressed me the last few weeks. He's impressed me, and I think playing with better centre backs, he'll do well for us. He's, he's not been found wanting these last few weeks. I think he's done a good job. You keep Sabitzer. Um, there's a good player there. I mean, he looked great when he came on last night. He's always forward thinking. He gets stuck in. He's got a great shot on him. Not the fastest in the world, but he's good at accepting the ball. Good at passing the ball, and he's always moving the ball forward. Um, and as I say, possibly Fred. Now I think from that, all we need for me is a full back, a centre forward, and a holding midfielder. But if you if you did get the centre back, and and sorry, we need centre back as well. Should I say sorry? Full back, centre back, holding midfielder, and centre forward. But if you do get a world class centre back, that could part of around, as I say, Martinez. Push him next to Casemiro. I think he'd do a good job. Now I think then on the basis of that we've got a great team and imagine if you could get a front line of Greenwood, Kane and Rashford. How many goals would that yield? With snapping out the heels or if an owner doesn't play well or anyone gets injured or they rotate, snapping out the heels, Garnaccio and Anthony. I, I see only good times with that team, you know, led by a top class manager. But as I say, we can't do this passing out from the back still because De Gea cannot do that. And I still keep him, I think he's a world-class keeper, but he cannot do that. So what you do is you don't play that way. You play to his strengths, and his strengths aren't passing out from the back. But that's my opinion. Now, I might be wrong, but I don't think it's all doom and gloom, as that caller did this morning. Your thoughts? Down below. Wait a minute, that's done, that's done, that's done.